Hey everybody, this is Bruce Bishop from ChronicleT.com. We're back once again with Matt Douglas and Tim Alcorn from AM930WEOL. Week number 10, football season's done, sort of. We have a little <laughs> bit left to go, don't we? Well, let's hope uh, we have a lot left to go. Uh, we got a couple of more of our video blitz segments, courtesy of Lorain County Community College. And Matt, as Bruce said, uh, let's hope we have uh, at least a few more weeks to talk high school football as far as Lorain County is yeah, concerned. Yeah, it's playoff time. You keep winning, you get to keep going. So hopefully we're going to see at least a few more weeks of high school football in the area. Hard to believe. Uh, Five Lorain County teams have advanced to postseason play. So, uh, Bruce, we'll talk about that in a moment. Yeah, let's go ahead and we're going to cover week 10. Just hit all the teams and tell us how everybody did, and we'll run down through that real quick. All right, as far as uh, wrapping up the regular season, uh, let's start in the Southwestern Conference. Uh, those border rivals, Avon Lake and Avon, they end up sharing the Southwestern Conference Championship. Avon Lake closes out the year as far as the regular season is concerned, with a strong win over the Midview Middies. So the Shoremen finish up at 9-1 and one on the year, and they share the conference championship with the Avon Eagles, who were involved in a wild one <laughs> against Berea Midpark to close out the regular season, Matt. Yeah, it's a great way to describe it, and that's the way most games win against the Titans this year. Final score of that one, Eagles beat the Titans 77-47. to oh, wow. Had to score almost 100 points to pull out that victory. Tremendous running game again with Nick Perusic back. He rattled off 295 yards, four touchdowns for the Eagles in that one. So a big win on there. And, and Tim, I think you got to give credit to some of those pack teams out there as well. It was win and in situations. Clearview Clippers come away with a big victory as they defeated Brooklyn last week, 40-12. to uh, Did exactly what they needed to do. Again, that two-headed monster running game they've got. They've got, in my opinion, the best two-back system in Lorain County with Drew Engle, Drew Engle and David Renfley. Those two guys accounted for all five of their touchdowns on last Friday night. And then uh, on the Columbia side, what a final night for Columbia as far as the regular season was concerned. Uh, they get a big win to close out the season. Brandon Coleman goes over 5,000 career rushing yards. And then they kind of had to sit and wait for uh, all the final numbers to come in. Uh, we had Jason Ward, Columbia head coach, on our Saturday morning wrap-up show on WEOL, and he said they needed five different scores to go their way, and all five came yeah. through. So Columbia advances to the playoffs. The Raiders in round one will be taking on Mogador. Interestingly enough, that's an eight-versus-one seed, although it will not be played at Mogador High School. Yeah, they get to go on the blue turf of Ravenna High School. So they're headed down to Ravenna. Apparently Mogador's turf a little beat up, and with all the rain this week, they said – you know what, let's just meet at Ravenna and play this one. So, folks, headed to that game, make sure you go to Ravenna. Yeah, Ravenna High School, the site for that Friday night football game. By the way, back to Brandon Coleman, over 5,000 career yards. Think about the fact that he missed significant playing yeah. time his junior year and his freshman year. He played varsity football as a freshman. He could have been near 6,000, if not over 6,000 yards. Again, does not diminish at all over five thousand yards for Brandon Coleman as Lorraine County's all-time leading rusher and now he still has at least one more game to play uh, that game against Mogador again at Ravenna and Bruce uh, to finish up last Friday night we'd be remiss if we didn't mention Elyria Catholic they were involved in a huge ball game against Rocky River we had that game on AM 930 WEOL a tremendous performance by the Panthers they got one of the greatest performances we've seen all year in Leighton Banjoff's 287-yard rushing performance against Rocky River. And then their defense was just tremendous. 33-13, to EC knocks off Rocky River. The Panthers get a share of the Great Lakes Conference Championship. And with that victory, Matt, they go to the playoffs for the first time since 2010. So hats off to the Panthers. They'll be in playoff action on Saturday night. We'll talk about that in just a moment. Okay. So from here on out, we're going to be doing a lot more looking forward than backwards. So we're just going to touch base one last time on 2018 season. Let's just kind of a little recap of the entire season. It was kind of a rough year for some teams. It was. Uh, looking at Lorraine County overall, uh, seven teams finished up with winning records, and five of those seven uh, will be playing in playoff football. We talked about them. Avon Lake, Avon, Clearview, Columbia, and Elyria Catholic. Uh, the two winning teams uh, that didn't get to the postseason, Lorraine and Amherst, they each finished up at 6-4. and four. Matt, there was one 500 team, right at 500, 5-5 five five on the year, Keystone. 
eight teams, eight, half of the teams in Lorain County finished below 500 this year. Yeah, some tough seasons out there, but I think a lot of teams are, are working on building programs. And Wellington Dukes, uh, I think fans of the Dukes are going to be excited. Rob Howells has the kids believing in what they're doing in that program. He mentioned, I know, on our forecast show, he intends to be back for another year. Those kids have gone through a lot of coaches over the last three years, and I think good things are going to be coming from the Dukes here in the years ahead. North Ridgeville's another team I say keep an eye on here in the future. They've got a passing game, running game going right now. That program's looking better and better, it seems, on a weekly basis. They finish off the end of the season with another big win against Lakewood, 56-13. to So I think they're headed in the right direction. Just a couple of teams, I think, really Really will improve as the season as next season approaches. And for those teams that finished uh, below 500, uh, the off season is so critical because most of those teams, as you alluded to, Matt, are younger football teams. So those young kids, they need to get into the weight room. Uh, they need to get bigger and mm -hmm. faster and stronger. And of course, uh, put in the time during the off season to make what was a below 500 year in 2018 a winning campaign in 2019. Yeah, I mean, that's what it's all about. And those players know it. Look, they're ready to. To go they'll take a week maybe two to kind of uh, get back into the swing of things and get that rest they need but uh, they're thinking about it already I assure you as a former player you're ready to get to the weight room and start preparing for next season okay so one of my favorite parts because this is always fun orthopedic associates plays <laughs> of the week these what, are always fun what yeah. do we have yeah and of course uh, the orthopedic associates play of the week brought to you by orthopedic associates I think I get to start this week that's it yep uh, so I don't really have one play that's the Orthopedic Associates play of the week. I've got a series of plays. Now, there are only three, but this series to start the game for Elyria Catholic against Rocky River really set the tone. Uh, head coach at EC, Brian Fox, calls this the juggernaut package. I love that term, the juggernaut package. So EC came out in their juggernaut package against Rocky River on Friday night. Direct snap rate to Leighton Banjoff. And we talked about his performance earlier. 287 yards. But on EC's first series, they went 70 yards in three plays. Direct snaps to Leighton Banjoff. And he covered 70 yards in three plays. And it really set the tone. He scored a touchdown for the Panthers less than a minute into the ball game. They jumped out on top. And as we mentioned, uh, their offensive performance, not only from Leighton Banjoff, but Cam Ingris, their quarterback, and, and the other guys that are involved in the offense, David Griffin, wide receiver, uh, they were tremendous all night long, got the great defensive performance. But it was those series of plays, so not really one Orthopedic Associates play of the week, but three plays, the juggernaut package for EC that really set the tone in that big win over Rocky River and catapulted them not only to the victory on Friday night, but again, to a postseason appearance this Saturday night at Knights of Columbus. Uh, well, Tim, I'm going to do mine a little differently. We're going to head over to Keystone where the Wildcats were hosting the Firelands Falcons uh, in a game to be 500 at the end of the season. Both those teams, four and five, going into it. 28 25 Keystone Wildcats led Firelands. A minute and 30 seconds left on the clock. Ball just inches away from the end zone for the Firelands Falcons. And Blake Ruffner takes the snap. I think all of Lorraine County would think Ruffner's probably rushing that ball into the end zone. Not the case. He pulled back the pass. But Carson Sandrosky, the Keystone Wildcats, not fooled. He fell into coverage as the pass went through the air. He knocked the ball away. And the Keystone Wildcats held on. 28-25, they got the win, got back in the win column, finished the season 5-5. Five and five. Big things ahead for the Keystone Wildcats. And since Tim grabbed a couple of plays, can, I'm going to grab an honorary Orthopedic Associates Play of the Week. That's my main one, but uh, I'd be amiss if I didn't mention former Keystone Wildcat C.J. Conrad, now playing for the University of Kentucky, makes the touchdown-winning catch against Missouri as the Kentucky Wildcats be beat the Missouri uh, Tigers with no time left on the clock. Final play of the game. I think it was 15-14 when all was said and done. So an honorary orthopedic associate play of the week there for C.J. Conrad. And a very deserving honorary orthopedic associates play of the week. Uh, boy, I, I saw that play unfold on Saturday. Twitter That's just crazy. blew up. <laughs> uh, C.J. Conrad, of course, a proud Keystone Wildcat, uh, now a Kentucky Wildcat uh, word is, CJ is going to be playing on Sundays next year. Uh, he is highly regarded, uh, should go in the NFL draft. But what a moment for CJ Conrad. What a moment for Keystone and, of course, Kentucky. And to score that touchdown with no time mm. left on the clock, 
Kentucky's ranked number 12 in yeah. the country. That's a heck of a football team. And, CJ, you're representing uh, Lorraine mm-hmm. County very, very well. Awesome moment. Yes, a very well-deserved honorary play of the week. You ever notice Matt seems to get a little extra wind in his sails <laughs> when we it. get to this part? No video, though. It's one of my favorite parts. Yeah, sorry, well, I wasn't able to make it to that game. I well, there's a ton of video it. out there on uh, on C.J. Conrad, oh, so yeah, look for it. Uh, he does do a little push-off on that <laughs> defensive back, but they're not going right. to call it, and he makes a great catch to win the game. All right, so I said we were going to look forward, so we're going to do a little bit of that, too. You know, you mentioned about getting back into the gym. Let's talk a little bit about your thoughts for the uh, 2019 season. What do, you, what do you guys see ahead for some of these teams? As far as uh, Lorraine County? Yes. Yeah, 2019. I would say, uh, for me, the team to really keep an eye on as we already look forward to next August and September, the Lorraine High Titans. They're going to be loaded in 2019. Uh, I know their head coach, Dave McFarlane, probably doesn't want me to announce that right here in the fall of 2018. But I think we alluded to this earlier, Matt. Uh, Their skill guys, meaning quarterback, wide receiver, running back, uh, all underclassmen. Jordan Jackson comes back. Tyshawn Lighty comes back. Dalen Dower comes back right on down the line. They've got a young offensive line. Six and four this year. Look for a huge season next year from Lorraine High. I'm going to peg Lorraine High as one of the teams to really watch in 2019. They've got a great team coming back. Uh, I think they'll be loaded. Yeah, Tim, I'm actually going to kind of address a whole conference here. I think, watch, the Patriot Athletic Conference dissolves after this season. Next year comes back, Lorraine County Conference. No Buckeye involved in that one. So that's going to open things up. That should be a lot of fun. Columbia, Clearview, Keystone, who's improving this year. Very young team getting better. I mentioned Wellington. Uh, They only had one senior, I believe, Parker Adler, on that team. So they're returning a bunch of players from last season to Oberlin, adding the JV program this year. They're only going to get better as things go on. So I say watch for that. I think that could be a very entertaining conference next season. I I would agree with you on that. And while we're talking about uh, the new league next year, uh, let's tip our cap to a guy who won't be coaching in that league because he's stepping down after an illustrious career at Black River. Al Young, uh, one of the great coaches as far as uh, Lorraine County, Medina County, Ashland County. We've talked about this in years past with Black River. Uh, They got kids coming from three or four different counties. But Al Young uh, called it a day as far as uh, coaching at Black River. But, man, we tip our cap to him. What a marvelous career he's had at Black River High School. Uh, His impact on thousands of young men. Think about all the time that he spent at Black River High School. So, Al, you will be missed, uh, and we tip our cap to you for an unbelievable career as the head coach of the Pirates. Yeah, you can't say it any better than that. I know a lot of the coaches talk about how he's a guy. They could just call up on the phone and get some tips from him. He's been in the game for quite some time, and uh, as broadcasters, he was always more than welcoming for us as well when we'd cover them, whether it be regular season or postseason. So, yeah, he certainly will be missed in Lorain County. So you guys are going to be busy this weekend, aren't you? Well, tell, tell us a little bit about what's coming up. Wow, we're going to be very, very busy. Uh, five games this week on WEOL and, of course, the mobile app and online on the website, uh, WEOL.com. It all starts off Friday night on the radio side. Uh, rematch from the SWC, Olmstead Falls at Avon Lake. Uh, this rivalry goes back so many years. They've had incredible battles. Had one just a couple of <laughs> weeks ago. Avon Lake's only loss of the year to the Bulldogs when uh, Olmstead Falls got a 61-yard touchdown run on a fourth down play from Jack Spellacy to knock off the Shoreman. So they meet again Friday night over at Avon Lake High School. That will be our radio game. And then, Matt Douglas, uh, you're going to be over at Avon for their first-round matchup, but you're going to be there not only for the game, but you're going to be there all afternoon. Yeah, Bull and I said, what the heck? Let's hang out there for quite some time. Andy Bull Bart's not going to bring you that game, but before that, we're going to do Bullseye on the afternoon live from Avon as we get ready for that big matchup between Springfield Holland and the Avon Eagles. Should be an interesting game. Everything Bull and I have looked into this point shows that the Blue Devils really like to air out the ball. they got a strong quarterback, strong receiving core. So basically, it's like Avon's playing Berea Midpark again, who <laughs> they finished against last week. And as we mentioned, scored 77 points onto the 47 of the Berea Midpark Titans. So could be another high-scoring affair on this one. Uh, We're looking forward to that one, as I mentioned. So that should be a lot of fun. Again, the Eagles taking on the Blue Devils of Springfield, hauling on stream two. 
And then stream three, uh, the Medina County matchup, uh, the Buckeye Bucks. They're back in the football playoffs. Buckeye on Friday night will be hosting Alliance. Mm -hmm. So we'll have that game on stream three. That's Friday night. And then two more games on Saturday. We referenced Elyria Catholic, their first trip to the playoffs since 2010. Elyria Catholic on Saturday night at home taking on Anna over at Knights of Columbus Field. So that's Saturday night on the radio, and then Saturday night stream two. First time in a while there's been a playoff game at Clearview, at Tom Hoke Field. Boy, the great tradition of Clearview football, and of course their field uh, named after their legendary head coach, Tom Hoke. So Clearview on Saturday night will be hosting Highland, but not Medina Highland. No, Sparta Highland this time around. Don't know a whole lot about them, but what we've seen from Clearview, and I said it earlier, I think they've got the two best system, two back system in Lorraine County. Drew Engel, David Renfley, those are going to be the guys who have to lead them. They've got a strong defense. Don't allow a whole lot of running against them. Their only loss came back in week one. Since then, they've rattled off nine straight, so they're in a good position, and getting the host makes it all the sweeter. Yep, so five games, Bruce. We indeed will be busy. All right. Hey, so before we wrap it all up, just – uh, you know, this could have been it, but thanks to our sponsors, we're going to keep going a little bit. So let's thank them. Indeed. Uh, a huge thank you, Lorraine County Community College. And again, this isn't our final weekly video blitz. Uh, let's hope we keep going for a while as far as football playoff teams are concerned. But a huge thank you, Steve Sefchek and everybody, everybody over at Lorraine County Community College. Kind of took you on a tour mm -hmm. of the college uh, throughout these weekly videos. I mean, we were at the or we had video from the Stalker Center and from the Student Center and just the beautiful campus at Lorraine County Community College. Told you about the university partnership. So uh, we've enjoyed doing these weekly videos. And again, huge thank you to LCC. And I hope you, you've learned a little bit <laughs> about this incredible institution here in Lorraine County. Yeah, Maryland. it's a great institution, as you mentioned, Tim, for the community with the Stalker Arts Center, the entertainment that they have on there uh, for anybody looking into classes I mean they get you going and uh, they've got great programs over there as well great people Bull and I had the opportunity to do one of our shows from the bookstore the Commodore bookstore over there so stop by say hi if you're thinking about taking classes if you just want a book or a new computer you can stop <laughs> over and do that as well again huge thank you LCC Indeed. yeah if anybody over there in the Apple store is listening I I'm, I want to watch so <laughs> let's uh, let's hold one for me there you go I love my headphones bought them at that quartet <laughs> I love them I love them all right guys <laughs> well Tim Elcord take us home all right uh, many people to thank not only LCC and orthopedic associates our sponsors but uh, Bruce Bishop behind the camera as always great job from Bruce Matt Douglas, always fun to be here with you. And, of course, biggest thanks goes to you, the viewers. We hope you enjoyed this edition of our Video Blitz. We'll talk again next week. We'll talk about playoff football. So until then, thank you again for watching. And so long, everybody.